greetings and welcome and warm welcome, I should say, as I texted to some of you from a very sunny Tampa Bay, Florida. I know some of you are likely who are watching this live now, uh, bracing for a storm. Uh, so what can I say? And one of our panelists is going to be coming to you from Miami, so you can hate the heck out of us. My name is Mike Blinder. I am the publisher of Editor and Publisher Magazine, Quick Housekeeping. Many of you use Zoom on an ongoing basis to do business, but you use Zoom meeting. This is Zoom webinar. And what that means is, is I'm in control of your audio and video. And since we have so many registered for today's workshop, um, you will not be able to turn on your microphone or your camera. Um, so let's just review something here on Zoom. At the bottom of your screen, you have a, a couple of options. We're only going to keep our eyes on one place only, and that's the chat room. We'd like to have vibrant discussion beyond, behind the scenes, if you wish, questions, concerns, put up your uh, information, if you wish. Uh, the one thing I want to warn you, and don't ask me why, but in Zoom webinar, when you put up chat, it automatically defaults to ask your question to panelists only. So I want you to do me a favor and change that to panelists and attendees. And I want to also tell my panelists to do that as well, because while I'm chatting with another one, if someone asks you a specific question, feel free to reply in the chat room, but make sure everyone can see the dialogue by replying to all. Let me introduce my panel right now, if I may. You can turn on your microphones and cameras. Barb Chodos. Uh, Barb, hello. It's an honor to have you on the panel today. I was chatting with one of our e &P advertisers this morning who says greetings to you. His name is Philip Beswick. Does that ring a bell, Barb? Oh, my goodness. Yes. Media audit. He was going looking. He was saying, oh, I'm going to attend if Barb's going to be there. So you must be <laughs> An important person, but you are the president and publisher of the San Diego Business Journal. So from one, um, that's a monthly, correct, ma'am? Well, actually, we're a weekly. Oh, oh, excuse me. Didn't do my due diligence. Please forgive me. Um, by the way, San Diego is also having nice weather, I assume. So I got to steer us over to Rick Bustler now, owner and publisher of Steel County Times. Now I'm hitting a guy with cold weather. Am I right, Rick? You're way up there in a... Uh, uh, you're near the spam capital of the world. Am I correct, sir? I actually had 30 degrees yesterday. So oh, there you go. Taking a nosedive again. <laughs> you're making, you, were out, you were out playing golf, I'm sure. You're in Minnesota, correct? That is correct, yes. And uh, Daryl, an old, uh, I would, I'd like to say an old friend, because one of my first clients, Daryl, was the New York Times Regional News Group. I have been to Florence, Alabama. I know what Shoals means, but you're coming to us from Florence. Am I correct, sir? Correct. All right, so quickly around the table, if you guys don't mind, let's start first with Barb. Barb, would you do me a favor and describe your operation for us? You said you're, now we know you're a weekly business journal. Yes. <laughs> how, big, how big is the staff? How many publications? Give me the, like that LinkedIn paragraph that you Absolutely. would put there. Go ahead. All right, so we are um, 20 employees, so we're a smaller company, uh, but we are print publication, weekly, uh, tabloid, glossy format. Uh, we are a paid product. Uh, our readership is around 35,000 weekly readers. We have 500,000 page views and uh, we do our signature events where we recognize industry leaders. I think everybody knows uh, business journals. We are known for our book of lists. So we publish a book of lists annually where we rank companies. And uh, you know our mission is very clear. We support the community of business. We talk about companies and people and it's very um, significant, especially in these challenging times you know, our mission has been to give optimism and hope to companies and try to find the companies that have really changed and pivoted, you know, during this pandemic. And I do believe that our community has really been appreciative of that and uh, just very excited to be here today. What is your circulation? Um, right now with 35,000 readers. And uh, tell me about the size of your staff. How many people are working uh, We have with 20, 20 employees. So wow. And you are, you are privately owned. You're not part of a big company, right? You're not part yes, of that group of business journals. You're, you, you work for an in, individual or a, 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 am I correct? Yes, it's Executive Hills Management. Mm -hmm. and we are actually Southern California business journals. So we own LA Business Journal, Orange County Business Journal, San Diego Business Journal, and San Fernando Valley Business Journal. Excellent. Let's swing it over to Rick now. Rick Owatonna. You see, I can pronounce that, Rick. Because I've been in your nets of the world, <laughs> I've been up, up. I've been up there many times. I had a lot of uh, clients that I traveled through Minnesota for. Tell us a little bit about um, the, the Owatonna Steel. Is that correct? Correct. Yep. Steel Times. 
Yep, and I'm the owner and publisher of uh, two newspapers actually, and a shopper that serve two uh, mostly rural uh, counties in southeastern Minnesota. So we're located about an hour south of the Twin Cities metro area. And the papers that I have are the Steel County Times and the Dodge County Independent, which is in Casson, next to Rochester, Minnesota, home of the Mayo Clinic. And then um, I also have a weekly uh, a shopper that we put out called the Dodge County Advantage. And uh, in addition to that, we put out probably about a dozen or so uh, special tab sections throughout the year. Uh, so we're pretty aggressive with that. And I've been personally, uh, I consume most of my time with the Steel County operation, uh, which has experienced uh, tremendous growth over the last uh, year and a half or so. Uh, so um, that's kind of in a nutshell who we are and what we are. Um, it, how big's the company, if I may ask? I'm sorry? How many employees? How many people? Uh, we have uh, roughly about uh, 14 between the two companies. Excellent. Good to know. Daryl, Florence Times Daily in the Shoals. Am I saying that correctly, sir? You are. Give us the quick, quick uh, overview, the elevator pitch of what you guys do. Well, we, the Times Daily is uh, a daily newspaper that's part of the Tennessee Valley Media, Inc. We own two daily newspapers and seven weeklies in northern Alabama, uh, all around the Tennessee Valley. Um, we have a, our own printing facility in, located in Florence that prints all our publications. And we also print probably another 30 to 31 titles in addition to our own publications. How big is the team there? Uh, in Florence, the team's a little over 100. Uh, Company-wide, we're probably close to 200. All right, excellent. And of course, my good friend, Howard Barbanel, full disclosure, this is a sponsored webinar. Howard, you are Executive Vice President of Design to Pro. You come to us from Miami, Florida. Design to Pro is a company that you brought to my attention. Why don't you give us a quick overview of that as well, Howard? Uh, basically, what we are is the uh, uh, design hub or the production hub for independent publishers. Uh, we enable independent publishers to achieve the same economy of scale that giant chains do in, uh, in uh, their uh, graphic design needs, uh, whether it's a page design, ad design, web ads, uh, marketing and promotional materials. Uh, basically, if, if it's a graphic need, uh, we do it, and uh, uh, we, uh, uh, we have a staff of about 98 uh, full-time uh, designers, uh, and, uh, and of course, about another half a dozen uh, people in uh, management, and executive, and administration, and whatnot. Uh, this is our 18th year. We handle about, uh, about 305 different publications every week. Uh, so there's uh, no end of pressure around our operation to meet deadlines. Excellent. And uh, you do, I got I to gotta say this, you do the work for us at ENP. I made that very clear. We work with you. Um, and as these other people on the panel, so I'm going to swing back to Barb. Barb, you, how long have you been using an outsourced design service, production service like Design to Pro? What was the model before? When did you make the switch? Sure. Um, well, we had a traditional production department. Uh, we had a staff of four, which handled layout, design, our sales materials, spec ads. And we actually made the switch. Um, we decided about two months before COVID. So we were over two years now. <laughs> okay, so you made the switch. Why? Was it a financial decision? Did someone talk you into it? Was Howard the best salesman in Jutson Slice Bread? <laughs> well, you know, <laughs> actually, I should probably say this. The ad that I saw on ENP, quite candidly, Mike, is one of the reasons why I called Howard. Okay, okay, wait a sec. That's the pull quote. I'm going to play, take that out yes, and play absolutely. that at every. So the ads in ENP, actually, so you gave Howard a call based on advertising. I what, did, I did, absolutely. Well, what was the feature and benefit that you saw then? And what were your feelings about it? Because I remember when I did my due diligence for ENP, I, I spent about, it's been about nine months before I, made, I pulled the switch to do it. And I brought in some you know, experts to work with me. One was a big design guy who had won awards. And he told me I must have a creative person on my team. I will fail unless I have someone on my team to push my limits and design exclusive art and don't live on clip art and all that kind of stuff. I mean, what made you 
where was your brain through all this? Yeah, so I think when I came into the operation, we had a lot of opportunity to improve processes. And so when I looked at our um, operations department, you know, we just saw the opportunity to reduce costs, um, to improve the overall quality. I mean, our systems were not in place. And so uh, that was one of the first areas where I evaluated it and worked with the staff to identify the challenges. And it was very candid. You know, we were just not um, meeting the expectations of our, of our editorial department, our sales team, uh, you know, not making deadlines. And we all know how important it is um, to have these processes in place. So an example of what you're showing right now uh, is a section, uh, what we do our whole Women of Influence series and Leaders of Influence. And this is, you can see the complexity of this. Yeah, I know. It's we like- Recognize, you know, top 50 leaders. And I can tell you, this is an example of, um, of a section that we just were not implementing. We didn't have the bandwidth or the resources to do it correctly, because you can imagine getting all these bios, these photos, these logos. So the decision really to, to look for uh, an operation that could really assist us and have the bandwidth for the volume of, of business that we, that we should have been generating more of, and we weren't. And um, I will tell you from, from that standpoint, um, the, the success that we've had as far as making deadlines, the quality. You know, here's an example of a cover wrap. As we know, a uh, month of February is Black History Month. Yep. Uh, again, there's a lot of pieces that have to come together uh, when we're producing these sections. And so um, that was an example of, of, a, of a list. You can imagine, again, this is a book of lists that we do. So we needed to have a team behind us that had more resources and more bandwidth in order to produce all these publications. I wanna just mention, if I may, when I look at this and I look at the complexity of that, my wife is my business partner, associate publisher and head of all content. And she just had to assemble our 25 under 35. And it took her like, just, you know, and she's going 25, the, you, this went on and on and on. I mean, you, I mean she's <laughs> upset about 25 faces we had. And, and the funny thing is, is when we're not having any trouble with complexity stuff like this. Um, when we outsource, although it scared the heck out of me when I made the call, because I thought you had to have someone internal to, to work. I mean, all right, let, let me put all my cards on the table and maybe you should bring Howard in for this. And then we're gonna move on to our next guest. Howard, when you approached me about doing this, I was scared because I thought that I had to have face-to-face -face ongoing meetings with a creative person to get stuff like that down. You want to send, sit at a desk or a conference table and go over the complexities. I don't do that now. I send these things off to a designer that I don't sit at a table with. And within an hour or two, I mean, correct me if I'm wrong, Barb, you get it like that. I mean, the turnaround isn't slow, right? Oh, I, it, that, that's <laughs> probably the, the biggest benefit that I do see. Um, you know, that the section that you just saw the top, in fact, that's the section that's running next week. Uh, we turned in everything and we got the first proof back within two hours. Yeah, I mean, I'm just, I just put my cover through with, proofing, I just put, <laughs> I'm doing 10 that does it right now for March. And I have 10 logos that had to be inserted on a playing card. And it, it came back in 45 minutes. Um, you know what I mean? But the funny thing is, is the designer, maybe you get the same thing I do. If the designer isn't happy with the, with the um, resolution or something, they don't, they just say bigger resolution. You get it all so quick that it, it comes together. Howard, how do you explain that to people that you don't have to have meetings? Remember, we, we're in an industry, Howard, that doesn't like to change. Do you agree? <laughs> it's like yeah, I, I, I will tell you that like, <laughs> when I first got started, as I'm sure you remember, uh, my, uh, and I was in college in my college uh, paper, and we used to work on uh, with Linotype. I mean, literally the hot lit, you know, and then the transition to uh, cold type photo type setting, then uh, to what you see is what you get and so on and so forth. And every single uh, uh, technological or uh, 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 change always brought about a certain amount of anxiety on the part of people, especially in the newsroom, although sometimes with the ad department as well, you know, how are we going to do this? Uh, we've been doing it the other way for 20 years. Uh, can we possibly get this done with this new technology? Uh, and uh, I, I remember very vividly in my first job, you know, the anxiety and the hair, uh, the hair pulling and the hand wringing over, uh, what do you mean we're not going to have real type that's fused with molten lead? We're, that's not, 
that's not real typesetting. We we we're get you you're, you're spitting out galleys and cutting them with an exacto blade and using uh, what wax? How are we going to do that? <laughs> so uh, so yeah, I think that one of the things that uh, that uh, that COVID has taught us is that uh, so many people have now experienced working remotely. And there's very little difference or next to no difference between working remotely with us and working remotely with your team. Uh, and uh, it would be better certainly uh, if, uh, if we had not had COVID, uh, but, but COVID has exposed a lot of people to the day-to-day -day reality of working remotely. And it's essentially analogous uh, uh, in working with us. And I should add that you're not working anonymously. We can get on Zoom with you. We can get on Skype with you on the phone, uh, email, text, whatever it is that you need if you want to actually have a face-to-face. -face. Uh, but but it's, it doesn't, I'm learning that that's, okay, this is just me and everybody can call me some kind of a weirdo. I don't think you need a lot of face-to-face. -face. You COVID taught me that sometimes meetings that go on and on and on are not necessary. You can swing an email around a team of five people saying comment, comment, comment. And before you know it, you've built a cover. You see what I'm saying? You know, Howard, you know for a fact that our covers are a pain in the ass, a pain in the butt. <laughs> and you have chimed in. I put you in our, because you'll scream at me it's wrong. And we take them real seriously. And they're very bold. And they make us, I'm going to show you some in a little bit. But let me, let me tell you, um, I don't need to sit around a table and put things on a wall. Does that make sense? And that was a big education for me. Barb, did you let anyone go? Did you lose staff or did you reassign? I hate to ask that awful question, but- No, actually that's okay. No, um, we actually were able to save two people with this transition. And like I mentioned, um, it was just right around COVID. So um, I had one person that wanted to be closer to her family. So she actually resigned. And then another employee uh, decided that uh, uh, they just wanted to make a change. So I was fortunate enough just with the timing of COVID uh, that, that two employees decided to leave, which then I did not have to fill those positions because of our arrangement with Design Pro. Now, now do, you, do you operate the same way that we do? And I'm gonna get to the other gentleman in a second, but I wanna just paint the picture. Uh, Howard basically sold the hell out of me. I did not want to move. I, I wanted to stay in my lane. This was about a year and a half ago, right, Howard? And you kept bugging me saying, I can make EMP better. We love this magazine. We want to work with you. And you kept telling me it would be an easy transition. I, I have think it's longer. I think it's longer ago than that, Mike, actually. I think it could have been. Okay, so yeah, I've only had it for two years and three months. So yeah, it was just okay. after, I think I, we made the change six months in. But here's the thing. I have one person assigned to me that does the magazine. Does that make sense? I'm assuming you have the same thing, Barb. There's one person who owns yes. it. Mine, mine's named Daria and yours is named who? Um, uh, well, we have Tash. <laughs> okay, I don't, okay, we have Daria. Project manager, yes. And, and Daria basically does my magazine. I mean, she, she can almost feel it. I mean, she's bugging us every now and then. Do you have those files for upload? We use a Dropbox system and can I have the ad log now, please? And it's almost like she takes us on that journey. Before we know it, we're looking at pages and we're filling holes. And we're, but then there's a whole different system when I want to order collaterals, business cards, letterhead, uh, sales collateral specs. We're big spec sellers. When I want to get into that in a moment, because I believe strongly that if you have an ad in your hand when you would approach a business, whether it's a digital or print, it, it just helps the sales process along. We use a portal for that. So Howard, when I put up a request for an ad or, or I put it into your ad portal, there's a myriad of designers there, right? It can, it can be done by one of 50, correct? I mean, I get a different person working on them. Yes, we have about uh, 30 people working uh, the uh, ad uh, factory, the ad portal bullpen. And uh, the ads get uh, uh, go to the first available uh, designer. Unless, for example, if we're dealing with a high-end glossy product, something that requires a bit more uh, effort, then you put that in your special instructions and we have some designers are more talented than others. Uh, but, uh, but yes, we, we turn uh, many ads around the same day if they're submitted uh, uh, by around uh, lunchtime, Eastern time. Uh, and uh, uh, collateral materials, we've done, I don't know, a bazillion media kits. Well, I don't know. No, I mean, we, we, but here's what I found fascinating. 
um, when you have one designer or two, um, and you know, salespeople, Barb, correct me if I'm wrong, and we'll get in. But a salesperson doesn't give the designer anything sometimes. They usually say these two words I hate, be creative. <laughs> Here's their logo, go to their, okay, wait a second now. I've, I've got a couple of the other guys laughing at me right now because we heard the same thing. So let's, let's bring in on that one. Um, I think what I've got here now is I've got, I've got um, um, uh, how, uh, Rick, right? No, Daryl uh, in Florence, you are laughing at me right now. Am I correct, sir? Because I'm laughing with you. Because tell me, correct me if I'm wrong, but a salesperson, that's what they do, right? They come back from the street and say, I have no idea. I'm, didn't you listen to the advertiser? Well, I think so. Uh, just give me something. And then what are you going to do, right? Your head goes. Yeah, there's usually a square box written on a napkin and there might be some scribble at the bottom that's the address <laughs> or something. We try to train the salespeople and I could go on. This is not a sales seminar, but salespeople, correct me if I'm wrong, have to be almost ad executives in today's world. You have to come up with ideas. You have to work with them. What I like, Howard, about this model, and, and I guess we will switch to you, Daryl, for now, if we can, is that I, I have different people's minds working on different concepts, right? And that's kind of cool. Mm -hmm. When I put up, you know, I give them as much as I can work with. Here's the bullets. Because they did, we, 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 you're doing half my ads, right? I mean, I have a, one of my largest advertisers loves your work. I mean, she, she's, 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 she's always the last one in. <laughs> the whole magazine's holding for her. I'm not going to mention the name. And very particular, you know, the green has to be a little greener. The blue has to be a little. And you, it's neat to get different designers working on that stuff. Daryl, do you find that as a benefit when you're working with these guys? I do. And the, the resources of being able to handle multiple projects where internally we could probably handle one or two projects at a time. We can we can do more now. All right. Well, talk to me about your publication and how you're using these guys. You do not use them for all your publications. Which ones are you outsourcing now? We are outsourcing our weeklies, uh, both ad building and page assembly. And our dailies are, are page assembly and design. All right, so what am I, I'm looking at the Times Daily now, right? This is correct. The, the this is designed. This is a broadsheet, and that's this correct. is a weekly, right? Yep, that's correct. It's a daily. A daily. Okay. So the, Howard's spitting this out every day for you. That's correct. Five days a week. Wow. Okay, and there's a lot of stuff in there. I mean, that's I here I am a monthly magazine with maybe up to eighty pages or so. I mean, this is a lot of work, right? It is. <laughs> All right. So what's the process? You got to tour. I mean, how, how quickly is the turnaround on this? What's your deadline? Are you sweating it out? How, you get this stuff done on time? I'm asking you to give us an honest overview of what the before and after was like. Well, well let's go. Back, let's go wh when did you make the switch? When did you start turning this work and outsourcing it? We started outsourcing a little over five years ago to a different provider. We went to D2P probably three and a half years ago, I think, Howard. Is that right? Yeah. Okay. And I can tell you my on-time press starts are better today than they were when I had my own copy desk sitting in Florence. Wow. Okay. Um, and then what's this we're looking at? That is one of our uh, football sections during football season. As everybody knows, football is big in uh, Alabama. So we run a, a weekly football section for college football. And again, okay, this, I love these, the, the little gang pages, right? I mean, everybody. This is gets... a, yeah, this is a double truck from one of our weeklies. And uh, they run a series of these throughout the year. That's just a business card ad. And all those business cards have to be beat, rebuilt because you get something to scan. That's not the quality you need. So you end up, end up trying to duplicate it. And D2P handles all that stuff for us. When, okay, when you made the switch, you were already outsourcing. In other words, this was just going from one company to another. Is this yeah, we, been, go ahead. We actually took a, a long road to outsourcing. We outsourced internally in our company from one daily, all the dailies to a centralized copy desk internally. And then we went to another provider uh, for a couple of years and then moved uh, about three and a half years ago over to D2P. Uh, Am I allowed to ask how much you're saving? What's the uh, bottom line like? Um, well, put it in, in bodies, it's about uh, seven FTEs 
for what we've outsourced. Uh, I wouldn't say it's all savings. We've reinvested a lot of that staffing back into our digital. Uh, on, the, on the web side, we've reinvested it uh, in other parts of the operation for additional content. So it's kind of like uh, it was a way to grow within our same footprint, if you know what I mean. Sure. I mean, that's what we did at EMP. We put the money back into content. I mean, that's where we want, that's where it has to be in today's world. Funding a newsroom is, is primary goal here. I mean, I'm a bar, but same to you, right? I mean, you, you ended up re real allocating those people and working them in. All right. We've been ignoring the quiet gentleman from Owatonna. Let's, let's bring in Rick. Rick, uh, tell us a little bit again, when you made the switch and why you made the switch from internal design to outsource? How long have you been outsourcing your work? I believe we started, uh, it'll be three years ago in May, so 2019. Um, and I was actually thinking about that earlier today, and I believe Howard reached out to me in some fashion. I don't recall exactly how, if it was an email or something was uh, caught my attention anyway. So I thought, hmm, this uh, looks kind of interesting and I need to look at this. Now at the time I was having kind of, um, we're a smaller operation, so it's hard to attract really good candidates, good graphic designers. And I was having some employee personnel issues. Uh, so that's kind of what precipitated this whole thing. I thought, you know, there's got to be an easier way to do this. And that actually was kind of what led us into this to begin with. So you had part-time people doing this or full-time people doing this? Uh, we had equivalent to five, actually, between the two operations of two newspapers. We had five designers. And uh, then... I internally kind of consolidated some things between the two operations, and we were able to scale back to three graphic designers. Um, at the time, um, I, I switched uh, to Design to Pro. Uh, so basically, we went from three graphic designers down to nothing. Those were FTEs, benefits the whole, yep. whole ball of wax. Yeah. How's the experience been? Did it? How's the team getting along? How's editorial feeling about it? I mean, what, what? How did it all? How, how's it going? If I may ask. Well, the beauty of it is that the people that we've had, basically, I have a newer staff, so they don't know the way it was before, so they're just learning new, you know, the way it is now. So that is a big benefit for us. We don't have to worry about, you know, this is the way we used to do it. You know, we're, why do we have to change that type of thing? You know, all that's kind of off the table. So I've got new people coming in, they're learning the new system, uh, learning how to do it with Design to Pro. And, and quite honestly, I think it goes uh, pretty smoothly. Howard, no one here is gonna give us an exact number, but on average, Compared to an, uh, an FTE, let's look at, I mean, Owatonna is our smallest operation here, correct, on this forum. I mean, I mean, you got a commercial printing facility here in, with the Times Daily. Um, Barb's running a pretty big operation, it sounds like, in San Diego. This gentleman here is running two separate small markets, had three human beings on staff. They're gone now, right? You have no design people on your payroll, is that correct, in Owatonna? Correct. That's correct. Howard, what was the average percentage off of a bottom line or top, I mean, what, what do you normally try to, because you got to under promise and over deliver, right? This is a, that's sales 101. Well, the interesting thing, if you're going to have a full-time employee that's FTE, uh, you've got uh, the salary, you've got your uh, employer contribution uh, towards taxes, you've got insurance, you have benefits, there are supplies, there's uh, computer hardware and software, yeah. Uh, there's, there's no end of all kinds of things. And then you have issues of turnover and training and recruitment. Uh, and one of the things that Rick was talking about is that, is that uh, how do you leverage uh, highly talented people without breaking the bank? Uh, and that's where we come in as an economy of scale because we have some very, very talented people on staff mm -hmm. who love doing print. And it's hard today uh, to find especially young people that want to work on, uh, on doing print ads and, uh, and, and print pages. Uh, and so through us, you could be in a smaller market or you could be in a major market, but you can be in a smaller market and access some of the most talented people in the industry. 
uh, and that's really a, the blessing of, of, of high speed internet, uh, you know, what it all boils down to. And uh, uh, so, but I would say that, you know, a lot of folks have saved 50% uh, on the cost of the pre-press work. Some people as much as 75%. Uh, it depends on how many uh, folks they had, how much uh, computer investment they had. Uh, a lot of folks make a decision to make the switch when it comes time to uh, upgrade their software. I mean, we've had people come to us using Quark from 15 <laughs> years ago, 20 years ago, uh, and they're saying, all right, well, finally, there's no support for this and we need to, uh, we need to get the InDesign cloud and it's gonna cost us X amount of money to set up five computers on this thing and you know, uh, along with the updates and so on. And, and they, they, they said, all right, we're crunching the numbers here, plus all the payroll and everything. Look, print is under a lot of uh, uh, competitive pressure uh, right now. Uh, it's not just COVID, it's also uh, uh, the web, it's electronic media, it's broadcast that's also fighting uh, often for the same local retailer, uh, the same local ad dollars. Uh, and print needs to be competitive uh, with other media uh, in terms of what is being charged for advertising and what's being charged for content. Uh, and so on and so forth. So it's no secret that people need to uh, try to achieve uh, uh, cost efficiencies and economies of scale. Well, I, I, uh, I think, okay. but not to be interrupt, there's another benefit that I, okay, you, you know, I come from the sales side. Um, I, I spent 20 some odd years after I managed radio and TV and then got into the newspaper industry on the digital side, but I, I rode with sales reps for a decade and then I had my team do it for another decade. There was this hate hate relationship in many of the operations I worked with between design and sales. Um, let me bring you, Daryl. You like to laugh. You like to nod your head sometimes. Do you understand what I'm saying, Daryl? When I when I say that sometimes the sales rep thinks the designers aren't creative enough and they don't turn things around quick enough or they're too busy for me. And when they try to, does that make sense? And I think there's an advantage to having more designers at your disposal and none of that internal personality stuff? Uh, I think today it's uh, less of an issue as it has been in the past. I think they're more on a page than uh, same page than they used to be just because of the communication level now required between advertising and pre-press to build ads. Okay. Um, I, I, I just find it fascinating that uh, my team now can put up their, their stuff into the portal and work with designers. And I don't hear a lot of that problem. Howard, you understand where I'm going with this? There's not a personality things going on. It's simply the, the, the work is just flowing constantly through without those, those, those long winded meetings and this and that and all that. So I like, I like the whole idea of this distance. Maybe I'm wrong. Howard, is that part of the value proposition sometimes? When well, we tried, we tried to turn the, uh, uh, the jobs around quickly, especially ads, because often you haven't gotten a check or you haven't gotten a, 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 a signature on a, on a search and order or a contract until you've got an approval of an ad. And time is money. And uh, if you're gonna wait two, three, four days for an ad because people in production are busy doing other things, you may lose that advertiser to second thoughts, to budgetary constraints, to uh, a competitor walking in uh, with what uh, the advertiser is convinced is a better deal. So, uh, so as quick as we can turn an ad around to you, uh, the better, so that you can close on the advertiser. And, and also we can do, an integrated campaign of print and web ads at the exact same time. Uh, and uh, uh, so that you can offer a, uh, a full campaign of multiple sizes of print and web ads uh, all at one time. And, right. and also all of our customers get the benefit of free spec ads so that you can sell creatively and not competitively, which is important. I just wanna interject that while we do have a bullpen on the ad side, on editorial, uh, uh, everyone always has a dedicated production uh, 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 project manager uh, that is their key contact with our organization and uh, that, uh, that, that they can reach out and talk to uh, and is responsible for their publication and uh, designers who are uh, on that publication, whether every day, every week or every month, uh, it's not uh, revolving around a bullpen uh, on editorial. 
it's always dedicated people as though they were working in right. your place. Uh, and so that they develop institutional knowledge and familiarity with your preferences, with, uh, uh, with, uh, with your styles, with, uh, with, you know, try to be uh, second nature and, and work together uh, intuitively with what it is that you want. As I, as I mentioned, we have Daria that works directly with the editorial team and pushes our magazine along. But I want to stay on the advertising side now because we've used this term three or four times now. And I want to, I want to get into it from someone who's taught sales, wrote a book, all that stuff, because I've always been in the sales business. But the spec ad is, to me, essential in today's world. And every time I can coach or consult a media company and I try to push them to speculative selling, um, actually, in, in the book I wrote 10 years ago, I called it hypnotic closing. And the reason I call it hypnotic closing is the worst part of the sales process is the objection. You get to the point of no return where you, I hate to put it that way, where you've done your feature benefit, feature benefit, you're asking for the order. And since people don't like to make a decision, they will throw an objection at you. Not, you know, like, let me think about it. Let me talk to my accountant. This really looks good, but, 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 but if, when I call it hypnotic closing, if you bring them creative, on the closing process. I think we all know what happens. They take ownership, right, Howard? I mean, I go in with a print ad and a digital ad laid out for them and say, I worked with our design team and I came up with this concept for you. And then you shut up. And I more nine times out of 10, what happens is the advertiser, the prospective advertiser starts to take ownership by correcting it. Um, I don't like the pink. I'm saying that's why I put this up on the screen. Let's say you're going in with the fairway food stores or one of these, you use too much yellow. We don't like yellow. Well, a good salesperson knows that's a buying signal, right? I mean, that's like, they just take an emotional, stop the feature benefit and just go, okay, okay we'll change that. Let's start Tuesday. Um, it's the same thing I always discuss when you're, you're taking a test drive in the car, they start talking about the CD player, or excuse me, that's old school now, the satellite, well, that's old school, the uh, Apple Play. <laughs> If you're discussing Apple Play, you bought the car because you're already discussing something, you're taking ownership of it. Um, I love spec selling, but so many times when I rode with reps or I try to coach a media company into this, they say, we don't have the bandwidth. Our design team doesn't have the time. We're barely getting the ads done that we do sell. There's got to be an advantage to that, Howard. I mean, it, well, let me see, Rick, do you understand where I'm going? Do you do speculative selling, Rick, on the street? Do you go out? with concepts to close the deal? We've done some of that. Um, I will say, however, we have some newer salespeople right now that are just kind of trying to get up to speed with stuff. So we haven't done as much as that as we would like, uh, but we have done some of it. Barb, how about your team? What's yes, your policy? No, absolutely. In fact, one of the examples that you showed, because we do these events where we have nominations and then we select finalists and then we have winners. So, and then we sell congratulation ads. So exactly what you're saying, Mike, we, we actually do the congratulation ads first and send it to the client and say, hey, <laughs> make it easy for them to execute. And the closing ratio on that about? is significant. Are you, is this the women in engineering? I should have brought up some congratulatory ads. Is this like one of the campaigns you're doing like that? Yeah, so this, 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 these, are the, these are the bios that are actually on the editorial side. Right. Congratulation ads will just, it'll be more of their positioning of themselves, who they are. And um, I'm not sure if we have any examples in here, but it's very, you know, it's like, a, it's, it's a very, um, just just their picture, their their bio and, and their company congratulating them. Well, I can show you an example of that. This came in last month for e &P. This is yes. a big revenue. Oh, right. This is huge for us because we now every month like to salute a different sector of the news publishing industry, operations, sales, a spoiler alert coming in two months, shooting stars. We're going to, we're going to salute the best photojournalists. And we let our readership submit uh, the one that's coming out in, in the next issue is uh, top 10, 10 that do it right. But these salute ads, um, Howard, you guys are laying some of these out for us and they do help us close deals. So you actually send the ad to close the deal. You do the salute ad on spec. Is that how you do Absolutely. it? Absolutely. 
That's brilliant. You know, there's something else we do. You might want to steal from us, Barb. How many times? Okay, I'm just having a conversation with Barb. Everybody else in this <laughs> just hummed to themselves. No, how many times? My wife gets concerned about this. Has someone been saluted in your magazine and they asked for 150 copies to send to every relative they know around? <laughs> do you do a lot of that? I mean, do you get you get those requests. Yeah, like, no, we do, and that's what's nice about digital, right? You can send PDFs, uh, but then we also have an order form where they can go online and order more print copies. But here's what we do, and you might want to steal yes. this from me. We let, this is, this actually comes from, this was a suggestion from our project mm -hmm. leader, Daria, where she'll take the salute ad, yes. the actual article that we've written about the individual and the picture and the logo, and she makes it into a beautiful high definition, eight and a half by 11, we can frame. Does that make yes. sense? Yes, um, and we do that, and actually, we also now design LinkedIn posts for them. So to your point about being, you know, all platforms, here's your print ad that we can frame, but then we can design the social media ad for you in order for them to put it on their LinkedIn page. That is brilliant. That, see, that, thank you. I'm going to just, Barbara and I are going to chat for a while here, guys, and swap <laughs> ideas if that's okay. I didn't mean it inter, uh, 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 Daryl, how about spec selling on your level? Do you guys do any of that? Do you push the envelope and make sure that you can get those ads produced even before they're sold? Yeah, we do a lot of that, especially when we're kicking off new campaigns and new projects. We'll do spec ads. Each sales rep will have X amount that they're supposed to do to kick off a new project. Uh, and we use those to sell and they're, they're very successful with it. I learned that back in my radio days that, that you always put together the spec, play the tape, cassette tape. That's Long, I mean, that's a tape for you guys under 30 on this. That's a tape we used to use in the old days. And then the advertiser and you put the copy in front of them and they're always taking ownership, always making changes. It's just amazing. Now, I wanted to, if I may brag a little bit about e &P, Howard, because you took us to a new level. We talk about the covers a lot at e &P, and we take them pretty seriously. Your design team goes through a lot of work for us on the cover to the point where we sometimes, they generate I think one month, Howard, because you're always part of our decision-making process. We love your input. Um, you always try to steal me the, the traditional. That's why I love your side. You're, you, you like to get back to the traditional. You're, sometimes they'll give me 10 to 15 different concepts when we say we're looking for something special. That's a lot of work, but they love to give, it, give that to us, don't they? I mean, I get different colors and I get different treatments and all that and more. None of this is expensive for us because we don't pay extra for all those different versions. I mean, there's nowhere in my contract with you that says, I, if I ask for four different redos, you're going to take, take me down a path and charge me more, correct? Yeah, I, I will tell you on editorial work, uh, we're happy to do it as much and as often until you love it. Uh, and, uh, and I should point out, especially for newspaper publishers, that we can redesign your publication, make it look like the Washington Post if you want, uh, uh, and, uh, uh, and do very fancy things for you. Uh, uh, we can do uh, photo silhouettes and text wraps. We can do all kinds of screens and overlays. We can do drop caps and pull quotes and whatever it is that, that you can imagine. If you let our uh, artists, uh, you know, loose and tell them, you know, you know, dazzle me with something, uh, we're happy to do it. I mean, at the same time, on a more conservative level, we will replicate the existing design and keep that going as long as you'd like and have it uh, uh, appear the same way uh, day in and day out. And it really depends on what the editors and the publishers of each publication uh, want from us. Uh, we're very, very good replicators. And, uh, and when we do make the transition for most folks, uh, the readership and, and and the editorial department can't tell that somebody else is doing the pages. I mean, we're 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 very very good at at keeping that continuity. Uh, A very good friend of mine, uh, Howard uh, Burl Schwartz, who runs an alternative weekly in Michigan, is asking you. They have a home improvement section coming. Um, does Design to Pro offer stock material? And the answer is. Yes, right. I mean, I have access to thousands and thousands of images, and and that you guys images, let me images. Yes, uh, stock photography is included in what we do. Uh, we do not offer editorial content. Uh, no, no, no. I'm not asking. No, uh, 
but uh, okay, can content. I see what Burrell's going. No, you're. We're, this is not a. This is not a shop where you get pre-written articles. But I, I have a portal where I can search over thousands, hundreds of th just tons of images. I type word in, and this sometimes. That's how we found the. Um, I, I guess I'm going to try to share it with you now. And I, rule number one is you never take go out of the PowerPoint. But we're just finishing up the cover. This is a spoiler alert, if I may, for. Um, March and I. This was a this was a done, done kind of. I'm going to put it up on my screen now and bring it up. This is the March cover for E and P. And how I found what I wanted to do, Howard. You might find this fascinating. Here it comes, and this is the spec version of it, as you can see. Um, we're doing ten that does it right. See that right there, um, and we're still working on it. Um, I just typed the number ten into your search box. The first thing it showed me was Ten Commandments, a million different <laughs> versions that I'm going, wait, and Barb, you're laughing. I thought that was too way out there. But then it showed me the ten, a Ten of Hearts. And I said, I wonder if I can get a straight flush of diamonds. And immediately there was a straight flush. Now, the hand wasn't part of that. Then I had to ask for the hand. You understand? The poker scene behind wasn't part of that. But then your design team found me what I, I wanted to put a scotch glass in the bottom right, but my wife vetoed that. I just thought a little, you know, with a little stir in it. But I mean, this is the kind of stuff you build. And then the design team meets you halfway. Barb, have you had fun doing it this way too? I mean, just kind of searching and trying to find the idea? Yeah, absolutely. And I will tell you, um, with our designer, uh, we'll search, but then <laughs> nine times out of 10, she'll come back with something better. You know, she'll say, okay, well, we can take a look at that, but this is what I think. And like I said, um, you know, she because she, again, she, the consistency, I think is what you said is key because she knows our products so well, because right. business publication. Um, but, uh, but yeah, but, but the resources are there if you want to do it, but we've been able to rely on our designer to, to give us those recommendations. I, I uh, Mike, if Mike, if I could just uh, mention that, uh, Rick, Rick for a small market publication has some really beautiful, uh, broadsheet front pages. I mean, I, I have very rarely seen a front page. That I didn't say, wow, this is, this is really nice look. Uh, and, uh, you know, I mean, I, Rick, I think you sent uh, some some front page stuff uh, to uh, to Mike, but uh, I mean they do some wonderful uh, uh, image work on the on the front page and uh, and uh, creative use of their logo uh, in in mixing that in with editorial. Uh, um, I was going to say I, I, there's just I had a designer once from your team tell us we were going in. Barb, they basically yelled at me in an email. You're going in the wrong direction. I want you to go in this direction. And they were right. You know what I mean? They, 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 I think there's an advantage to having a designer that works with lots of different publications. Does that make sense? Because they're looking at a whole mess of different stuff all the time, not just sitting in the same building working on the same product. So you get some weird, cool ideas through this. I also wanted to tell you guys a story, if I may. I'm going to bring back my screen. And Howard, you make it. You don't know this story, Howard, but I was bragging on our on our front pages, and I wanted to show you. You might remember this one that got got us in a little bit of heat. Let me just go ahead now. This one right here. Does that look familiar, Howard? You were part of that one. I, I can't see it. It's off to the side. Oh, is it? I'm so sorry. You guys, can you see that, Barb? The uh, yes. It's a very. Um, poignant look at, at at hedge funds. It's a, it's a vulture sitting on top of a newspaper. Oh, oh yes, yes, yes. And we decided to go with it. Clean, red. Um, there, your argument with us was a different color for the face of the vulture, I think. You wanted the, you said that's not the original color of the vultures. I don't remember. And we had a lot of vulture discussion. Between no, them. no. The, the discussion was, if you can move that over a bit to the, to the other side of the screen, I can see what, what we're talking about because I'm only seeing half of one page. If you can sort of, there we go. Okay. What we had was, it was a minor, minor thing, but you'll see that the vulture has kind of a fuchsia or magenta type of face. And I had advocated to uh, right. match that color on the headlines instead of, <laughs> instead of the, the fire engine red. That, that well, you would my have wife liked. vetoed it and said, we're going to go fire engine red. Now, we right. followed it up with a nice cover the next month. And both of these appeared at the big conference, the America's Newspapers Conference, because we, we knew this was going to happen, where we showed, yeah, there's a hedge fund issue. But what's neat now is 
there's growth from local ownership. Well, here's what happened. You might not, and we, the vulture theme, your guy, this was all you. These were the actual pages of the article and how they really did it with some great, you know, treatment. Um, we got a lot of buzz on that at the, at the convention, but look to the, can you see that? The Atlantic came out with that cover after us. And wow. I posted this image as you're looking at now on LinkedIn and immediately the Atlantic changed their cover to that <laughs> and then put up some story <laughs> about how, um, well, we used a real vulture. Their vulture isn't real. Ours is real. And it was like, we paid. I'm, so my wife and I are cracking up in the kitchen going, the Atlantic is bragging that they had to pay for a vulture for the shoot. You know what I mean? But it, it was a wonderful campaign uh, on a very, very, uh, hard topic, but Howard, again, the input of your team on that made it just a heck of a lot of fun to work through. Um, and if, again, the magenta look and all that and more. So I guess we're giving everyone, we got to bring this hope now and, and, and get any final questions from our, our participants. Everyone stayed with us. Thank you. No one's you know, left during this conversation. If you have a question for Howard or anybody here that is outsourcing, um, please, by all means, um, do it now so we can address them in front of the whole group. But I want to go around the table one more time now, if I may. And let's start with, um, let's start with you, Barb, if we don't mind. Um, uh, what advice would you give anyone right now, the goods and the bads, who is now sitting on the fence going, God, my designer has been with us for, for a long time. I really like her, but God, I could really use the savings. What would you say to that news publisher now about the decision you made to start outsourcing operations, pre-press and that, and what works and what doesn't work? What advice would you give? Sure. Well, I do think first being very transparent about what the challenges were, right? So we got it all on the table, right? Because you want to get that buy-in to say, hey, if it's working, we don't need to change. So I think being very upfront and very transparent. Um, but then I also think what we've heard today too, it's about reinvesting you know, as well as savings, and especially on the digital side, because we had the issue too. I mean, we've got, a, we've got a very solid print product, but we were looking for opportunity to improve our digital platform and our digital products. So I do think when you're positioning it as an opportunity to grow the company and to become more profitable and to be able to expand, I think everybody wants to work for a company, right, that is in a growth mode. So I think being very transparent and very direct. Um, and I do think that hopefully if you have people you want to keep on your team, what skill set can you train them and develop them to, to, to reassign, right? That, that would be the ideal. Uh, but if not, sometimes you have to make those tough decisions, you know, to, to really have the company, you know, be in a much better position. Uh, but I also think something that we did here, Howard, and with the team, it's like with any, um, I don't even use the word vendor, they're partners, right? They're an extension of our company. And so if you really, and if you have issues, always will, right? How do you make sure you have those communication channels um, and you're treating us like a partnership, like an extension of our company where we show that respect to each other? I think that's very critical. And when we identify those issues, I think what I see Design Pro do very well is on the communication side, um, that they respond very quickly because you are going to have issues. That's just the nature of it. But, but the key is how are you working together to, to solve those? So I do think you have to over-communicate I think you have to share the successes. I, I do a weekly recap every week to my team and I'm constantly using the successes of what Design Pro has done to help us. So I think you can never ever communicate that for those naysayers that are still saying, hey, you know, they're a little concerned. Uh, but I do think that the communication part is so key and to really over communicate initially when you're making these changes. Rick, same question to you. What advice would you give to someone who's thinking of doing this? What was working for you? What's not working for you? Um, take the floor. Give us your final thoughts. Well, I would say, I, you know, I come from a smaller operation and outsourcing has been, quite honestly, the, the best decision making decision, business decision that I've ever made with the greatest impact on the bottom line. And I wanted to jump in there earlier, but between the two operations that I have, you know, I was spending close to $140,000 a year on graphic designers. And last year I spent between the two companies, $35,000 with Design to Pro. So that was a savings of about $100,000, which comes about 70%, I think that comes out to. So it is a significant savings. And for us, we're able to reinvest into our product and be hyper-local 
and work on our content and getting more news content in the paper. And it's allowed us to do, do that. And uh, we've experienced a lot of growth with our one operation uh, just in the last year because of that. So I think that's probably the biggest thing uh, for us. And the communication barrier, I think is, uh, that's a challenge uh, that you have to overcome. Um, it's the one thing I don't like is that, you know, you don't have somebody next to you face to face that you can say, hey, you know, do this or do that. You know, you have to rely remotely and, and typing stuff out, uh, messaging back and forth, which becomes a little bit of a challenge. But I think after a while, you kind of get used to that. All right, we're going to let Daryl bring it home. Daryl, advice to those that are thinking not, you got a pretty large operation there. You're running a commercial printing facility. You still have designers on your team. You're managing multiple products. What advice would you give to a publisher who is, you know, sitting on the fence about outsourcing? Well, I think, like Barbara said, the transparency is a big part of it. The communication as you're going through it and staying with the, uh, the message about, you know, the flexibility that allows us to do and the, and the opportunities it gives us for going after new business to, to invest in other products that are digital and to, you know, just keep growing the operation. You know, nobody likes to reduce positions. We certainly don't either. But the, the ability to continue to grow and invest in our future is what the company needs to do. Um, Howard, it, th we're pretty much bringing it home right now. You're, um, you, you have 300 and some odd publications you're dealing with. Is there a moment coming where you can, you're going to have to stop doing it? Or you, you having somebody actually typed in here, are you hiring? Are you always looking to grow? <laughs> I mean, I, you know, uh, uh, I don't hire the design team, but I could I could put you in touch with who does. But uh, uh, but I will tell you that. And there is a question here is uh, how do you upload content to websites? I should say that we absolutely positively will post your editorial content to, to your websites if you want. And that includes making your ebook and posting that up there, too. Uh, and that's also included. Uh, I would say really the key thing is uh, I try to use the example of Apple Computer, which is one of the most valuable and successful uh, 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 companies in the world today. And Apple hardly manufactures anything that they do. And, and so many people, and Daryl, please forgive me, they're not running printing plants anymore, but although the fact that they're not is good for you because they're coming to you to print their publications, but uh, it used to be back in Ben Franklin's day that you would set the type yourself and you would you would you know run the paper and the ink over the press yourself and it was a manufacturing operation. Uh, Apple uh, intuited very early on that what they wanted to be was uh, uh, content providers, uh, meaning uh, to create uh, interesting products and uh, and the operating systems for them and the apps for them. And uh, so they spend all of their effort on content, which is software. Uh, and, uh, and then their second uh, effort is spent on marketing, which are sales. And that's made them into one of the most valuable companies in the world. And I think that what's going to be important for print publishing now and increasingly in the future is how to separate yourself from being a manufacturing plant or a factory step away, don't exactly. be a manufacturer, and sort outsource uh, subcontract that manufacturing to people who specialize and do this for a living every day for a lot of folks, and, and, and then channel those uh, savings into uh, enhancing the web and digital products, enhancing the editorial products, uh, 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 you know, for example, being hyper-local and providing better and more coverage, and also, and this is very significant, being able to afford to put more boots on the ground for folks selling ads. Uh, because uh, often, you know, it, it takes a certain amount of dollars to initially hire a salesperson and, and get them out there and, get, and, and, and be with them for the first number of months until they're, they're profitable for you. So, uh, so what, we, what we do for people is, uh, in addition to providing really great creative uh, is on oh, there's a copy of a great Steel County Times up there in the in our head. Right. Uh, the uh, 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 but uh, uh, but but what we do is 
you know, help stretch your budget, help stretch your money, uh, and at the same time, make you look good. And we, can, and we can do all kinds of things for you graphically. If you can imagine it, we can do it. Our staff loves to be stretched creatively. And uh, so, uh, and just think of us as those people who would be working in that back room, you know, on the, uh, on the, uh, on, on, on the, uh, on the max in your back room, but we're not in your back room. We're somewhere else, but you can reach us, you know, uh, email, phone, zoom, uh, whatever it is uh, that you need. And, and I, I would like to also emphasize that uh, if, uh, if, uh, if email is, uh, you know, uh, a challenging way to communicate with us, we're happy to communicate on whatever platform you need or want. And uh, it's uh, Rick, you know, we, we, you can you can zoom us and we will we'll be delighted to be the person standing next to you saying, hey, move that headline over here. <laughs> so well, no problem. Let's uh, first of all, I want to thank this incredible panel. Some quick questions at the end. There's people asking about your pricing, Howard. Um, do you have different pricing for different size publications? I'm assuming the answer is yes, yes and yes. Uh, next, uh, churn. How many different project managers have I been through? I'm coming on two years and I've had the same one, Barb. Same, same project manager. I don't see any churn. I have yet, but there might be. I mean, I'm sure, Howard, if that happens, you do everything in your power to make sure it's seamless, but we haven't, I haven't had any changes of any kind. Um, and people are asking for contact information. Howard at design to pro.com. His mobile number is there. That's the other thing I like about Howard. He puts his mobile number up. You're always answering. I text you text me a lot and I text you back. Rick, thank you, sir. Stay very warm up there. Okay, sir. You got a storm cool. coming. Um, Barb, enjoy San Diego. I, I, my wife and I will come out and visit you when we head to the West Coast, if that's okay. Show us your operation. Absolutely. And, and Daryl, um, enjoy the, 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 the Alabama, right? Seafood. And by the way, I'm speaking at your conference uh, this, this summer. I hope you'll, I'll see you there at the state association conference um, on the, on the shore, wherever, I forgot the name of the town, but we're going to be down on the, on the, um, Orange on the Beach. Era. all right, everyone have a good day. Thanks for your valuable time. Appreciate it.